Hi right, guys, how's it? Kia ora to my Kiwi followers and Fono over in New Zealand. Happy Monday to everyone. A couple of more days before I start my new job, so I have a day off. Gonna run some errands, get the house sussed up and whatnot. Thought I'd come in with a little weekend recap here action because we had heaps and heaps of rugby this weekend. Man, it was great being able to get up early here stateside and have rugby from like eight in the morning till you know three o'clock in the afternoon here it was really really nice being able to catch some some pretty decent rugby action over the weekend uh, through the tv and then a couple of these tier two games on uh, various other websites so let's go ahead and start off with the recap of the weekend some exciting scores some blowouts that were pretty pretty disgusting to watch and uh, some interesting little tidbits that maybe you guys, uh, some games you might want to see if you can seek out and find. So I will start with some of these lower tier games, guys, the games that people didn't really uh, get a whole lot of chance to check out. Um, and uh, we'll start off with two tier two nations, one on the rise on this side of the globe and the other uh, kind of still trying to edge their way into the big boys pack in Europe. And that was Romania versus Uruguay. Um, Uruguay has recently done really well, at least on this side of the globe, beating the U.S., uh, pr pretty badly down there in Montevideo at the end of uh, the qualifier there, causing uh, they automatically qualified for what I believe to be the group of death. USA is now trying to play their way into it now uh, to get one of those final World uh, Rugby World Cup spots for the next Rugby World Cup in France. Uh, you had Romania, like I said, taking on Uruguay. The final score, 29-14. This was not through any apps here. I was actually able to watch this via the World Rugby YouTube page. So if any of you guys are subscribed to World Rugby, see if you can find it. They have the Spanish and English commentary. Um, I actually tried to watch it a bit in Spanish just to see if I could follow along living here. You know, you do learn quite a bit of Spanish living in Texas. I did not. I had to switch it over to the English commentary. Um I kind of thought it would be a little bit more of a slugfest. I thought Uruguay would maybe put up a little bit more of a fight, but you did get to see that, like, yes, Romania is a little bit more advanced in their rugby playing. Uh, I think having all those guys play in France probably doesn't hurt for the Romanians. So, uh, like I said, final score 29-14 for that one. Then you had the other uh, big Tier 2 game happening over in Spain, and you had Fiji taking on Spain. Uh, final score, I believe, was 43-14. to I didn't get that Spanish final score there. But uh, another game that you can watch on World Rugby, um, it was a pretty interesting Fijian squad. wasn't really their strongest side. It's not the side they would put out against like a New Zealand or a, you know Australia or any of those big boys. Quite a few younger guys on that team, but still exciting to watch. Uh, those flying Fijians, they can go, man. They, uh, uh, they like a good run with the ball. Um, I still prefer kind of watching Fijian Sevens just because we've seen how dominant they can be uh, through the World Series of Sevens and then the Olympics and whatnot. So then we get to the big boys, man, the big games on the weekend. And I'm going to go ahead and start out with the one that probably shocked me the most uh, as far as the final score. Um, Ireland versus Japan. God, that got ugly. That was a nasty, nasty game. Final score, 60-5. to five. Uh, Andrew Conway with the, with the hat trick, three tries. Um, anybody who has already seen on social media, obviously, that dude Jarfo69 showed up and stood next to the uh, Brave Blossoms there uh, during their national anthem. Um, and I... It's entertaining, it's funny and whatever, but like... Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I wouldn't care if it was, like, a professional sporting event, but you know, kind of national games. Like, dude, show, show a bit more. I mean, I know I live in that generation of, like, people who get on YouTube and want to, want, to, want to make friends and be somewhat popular, but I don't think I would go to those links to do it, man. I just, uh, you know, I, I think I got to maybe a little bit too much respect for the game, but like I said, maybe you don't find it disrespectful. I don't know if I necessarily, I just kind of find it to be a bit in ill taste, I guess. Um, but what do I know? I'm just a guy over here in America. Uh, but yeah, to what happened to Japan? That was an absolute hiding. I mean, like uh, you kind of thought that they were, um, I'm wondering if it was uh, that pool game. <laughs> that was like that was payback. That was revenge for that pool game to remind Japan. Nope, nope, you're not at the big boys table yet. You might be on paper, but not not quite yet. You still got a bit to climb there. But uh, that was a proper hiding 
by the Irish. And um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go ahead and go out on a limb here. I was really worried about uh, to, about England and France in this tournament. No, I think the real team everybody needs to worry about is Ireland for these Southern Hemisphere teams because they were solid, man. Like it was. It was not even funny. They were really good. It was a really entertaining game for the most part. But yeah, God, what a what a blowout by by Ireland over Japan. Then we had another pretty big blowout. We had England taking on Tonga by a final score of sixty nine to three. Uh, Jamie George and Ben Youngs both had two tries apiece. You had a red card on Tonga pretty late in the game. It was a pretty dirty hit. You can go back and watch it. It was yeah, it was definitely a red card. Um, I still, like I said, I'm never going to, my, my love for the Sea Eagles of Tonga is never going to wane. I just, I enjoy those guys. I enjoy watching them play. It's just sad that like, you know, you look at how many teams have Tongans on them <laughs> and then you look at Tonga's national side and they are, yeah, it's, it's it was a pretty ugly one pretty quickly there. It felt, it felt good through the first half and then the second half came on and it was just, yeah, it was the England show after that. And, um... Also, congratulations to the England's women's team for beating uh, New Zealand, uh, the Black Ferns there. But, um, yeah, that was a pretty, pretty ugly one. Then we had the game that I live broadcast, already did the breakdown. We had uh, South Africa taking on Wales by final score 23-18. Uh, the big hubbub since the game that I basically maybe didn't bring up in the breakdown video, man, Fred Stein is like, dude, you got Victor Madfield, like all these guys like, Oh dude, I've always known this guy's got it. This guy's got it. This guy's got it. And it's like, it's cool to see those veterans, uh, you know, get out there, you know, money Stein did it during the British and Irish land series. It's cool to see those older cats. I mean, you know me, I talk about uh, Dwayne from all the time and he's, he's, a, he's an older head too. He's 35, 36 years old. He's getting up there in years too. And, um, I had one of my followers kind of bring up like something that kind of made me go hmm a bit for a minute. It's like, dude, we beat the All Blacks and they beat the brakes off of Wales. Why are we not doing that? Why are we not putting up 50, 60 on teams? Like, um, and it's a debate for another video, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, it did kind of make you go hmm. But, you know, congratulations to friends. He's uh, he's a great dude. Uh, people saying he's the Chuck Norris guy, all that kind of thing. I, I, I live in America, and Chuck Norris isn't really the best dude at times, so I won't compare him to that. I just think it was great to see an older guy. That 54-meter kick was absolutely beautiful, and uh, if you watch my live video, you can see my reaction to it. I was like, oh, my God, I couldn't believe he hit it. It was like, holy crap. Um, then you had another very one-sided match between New Zealand and Italy. Dan Coles with the two tries. Dan Coles leading the Haka. God, man, he, he actually did really, really well. I, uh, I don't think I'd ever seen him lead it before. Maybe he has. I just didn't ever notice. Uh, I apologize, but, um, you know, I'm so used to it being TJ leading it. You know, TJ or Aaron Smith, uh, you know, those are the guys. I still don't think anybody holds a candle to Pity Weepu. Uh, he was, yeah, that guy was the best at it. I'm, Kiwi followers, my fauna, you know, maybe you can tell me I'm wrong, but I'm sorry. Pity was like the best, in my opinion, at leading the Haka. He was just, uh, he just got into it so much. Uh, but yeah, 47 to 9, not even close. Um, and it wasn't even like the best all black side that they could put out. Uh, Seven Reese had a try. A couple different guys, like I said, Dan Coles with two. And, um, you know, it's kind of what we expected with Italy. They've kind of been, you know, at least for us in the Southern Hemisphere, we've debated why are they even in the Six Nations. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, would you rather see Georgia or Romania? Would you let Georgia in? You know, but the reality is, is I think they'd probably get beat pretty bad by the rest of those teams as well. Uh, then we had France and Argentina. Was this the time for Mario Ledesma to, to finally right the ship and get a win? They are on a six-game losing streak at this point. They lost both games to us, both games to Australia, both games to New Zealand. And they are now on a seven-game losing streak. Uh, they did lose by the score 29-20 there in France. Um I watched a bit of it. This is the game I didn't watch all the way through. I did watch some of the game highlights and then saw some of the social media commentary and everything like that. And you can see, like, uh, you know, uh, Thomas Lavanini 
just crush you. You can just tell he's he's done. Like he's not done, but he's like he's getting sick of this losing crap real quick. And it was a good game. They held their own. It wasn't like Argentina ran up and down the field with them. It's just with Argentina, France, with Argentina, you feel like it's just something is like not quite clicking there right now. And I'm hoping Mario can get it straight squared away. I'm hoping Chikla can can help him out, and they can get that Michael Chikla can get these get these things squared away. It's just not, oh man, um, yeah, it's just not looking good right now for Los Pumas. Uh, I hope that they can kind of get the thing the ship righted here uh, coming up next weekend, but we shall see about that one. And then the last but not least game, the Sunday game here in the States. Uh, we had Scotland taking on Australia. And uh, by a final score, 15-13, Scotland gets the win. A little bit of controversy there with uh, James O'Connor. You can go back uh, the analytics channel that's big on YouTube here. I already watched it. That James O'Connor try should have not been disallowed. Uh, Latoa's arm did not touch the Scottish player. It should have not been disallowed. Once again, kind of an argument about bad officiating. I'm not going to go on that road on this one. But, um, yeah, it was uh, James O'Connor back at that 10 jersey at that fly half position. He's my personal preferred guy out of out of Australia. Like I said, you guys all know I hate Quaid Santini Cooper. And um, he was a bit rusty there. Missed the, that first kick that he had. He just looked like the first kicks that he made. You could tell he was a little bit uncomfortable. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a interesting game as well. The final score, 15-13, a, a slugfest, if you will, there in Scotland at BT Murrayfield. Looked like a packed stadium. Finn Russell was back on the pitch. Stuart Hogg was back on the pitch. We got to see the big boys. So it was a great, all in all, great weekend for international rugby. Um, I will be getting the lineups here pretty soon for next weekend's game. I will probably more than likely be doing the Springbok game live again. Um, once again, I appreciate everybody who came out to say hi during that. I know there were some power issues for the first 40 minutes, at least in people with, and, uh, KN and Durban area. They had, didn't have power for a bit for that first half, uh, during the game. It's unfortunate, but all we can do is hope that the South African government can fix that. I'm trying. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bad, but, uh, yeah, so hopefully we have another good weekend of rugby, guys. I've got a couple more days off before I start my new job, and uh, I will let everybody know how that goes. We'll get the lineups. We'll get uh, the weekend figured out. Um, I did make a trip to the local Safa market yesterday afternoon to get uh, a Malva cup for the missus. She wanted the lemon tart. They didn't have any. I got... Um, some other confectionery items. I got myself a kilo of throw of ores and I got me some body to throw on the grill. So I will uh, have me some sausage for the week, some farmer sausage for the week. But I hope everybody has a great week wherever you're at in the world. Um, you'll hear from me again very, very soon. And cheers and thank you guys for the continued support. I really do appreciate it. Um, on a final note on this video before I say bye, I... I've been doing this channel for, for about six months now. Um, if anybody's ever started a YouTube channel, you know how this is. You know how it goes. You know that, like, as you get bigger, you start getting emails. People like, hey, will you promote our product? Will you push people towards our website? That's why you get people telling you, hey, go to this website and enter this promo code and you'll get 10% off because that's how they make money. Like, And I've always had the aesthetic on this channel that this was very DIY. This was very, uh, you know, I, I'm a very punk rock attitude kind of guy. Like, I never want to sell out to the man, that kind of thing. So I've never really been keen on pushing anything. And I've never really been keen on, on telling people like, hey, go buy this. Because I'm not like a mass consumerist guy. Granted, I do have, yes, I have an Apple Watch and I, I do an iPhone and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not keen on like going and telling people like, hey, go buy this because I buy it. I would never like be keen on that. But I had a follower, a very, very loyal follower of mine reach out and say, hey, look, man, I'm, a, I'm an older gentleman. I'm on a pension. I'm just trying to do a little bit of online business. And I'm like, hey, buddy, what are you selling? He was like, I have books for sale. They're little small rudimentary books, mostly just kind of hilarious little stuff. Good for like sketching that kind of thing. 
And thinking about the holidays coming up, we've all got little ones. Uh, I know that here in America and in Canada, we do the stocking over the fireplace and you fill it full of all kinds of goodies or lollies for my Kiwi friends, all kind of confectionery. Why not stuff some books in there, man? So I'm going to post the link down at the bottom of my page. Like I said, I'm not making any money off of this. There's no promo code you need to enter to 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 get shipping. and I'll put you, There's none of this, man. This is just a guy that I want to help this guy out. Go on there and check out what he's got. He's always putting up new stuff, man. Really, really nice guy. Like I said, a very loyal follower and a fount of like, oh my God, knowledge so much. Really cool guy, but I'll go ahead and put his link under this video. If you guys want to go check it out, just give a click to it. Go see what they got. See something you like. Go ahead and buy something, man. It's uh, You're helping a guy that's uh, in his golden years. And uh, I'd hope that when I hit mine, that people would do the same for me, man. It's uh, We got to be in a good world. And like I said, the holidays are coming up, man. Buy a few. Stuff some stockings, that kind of thing, man. It's always good. And he's got books on all kinds of stuff. He's got kids' books. He's got golf, this kind of stuff. All these kind of things. All kinds of hilarious stuff. And uh, just go in there, give it a check out, and take a look. And uh, I promise you guys, this is not going to be a normal thing. I'm not going to get on here and start my video with, oh, hey, go to this website and go buy this. No, I will never be down like that. I won't say never, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm not doing that right now. But uh, yeah, guys, go ahead and check out the link. And um, I will talk to all of you guys again very, very soon. Cheers, guys.